Okay, Santiago Grassi and Fernando Sheffer. How are you doing, boys? Doing well, doing well. Welcome Glad to be here. Retro. Welcome to the ISL podcast. How are you? Good? Yes, thank you very much. Awesome, boys. Awesome. Oh, well, listen, I'm going to start with you, Santi. What's it like being in the, your first professional competition? It feels unreal, honestly. It all happened so quick. Uh, I was thinking like where I am right now and where where I thought I was going to be 10 years, like 10 years ago, what I was thinking, what I wanted to do, you know, and this was never an option. So I'm so happy to be here. So happy to be part of this first generation of swimmers that are being able to be professionals and hoping that uh, this just continues like this and everybody can can join us. Awesome, man. Oh, Fernando, what about you? How's your experience in the ISL so far? I'm very excited to be here. Um, this meets uh, format and the energy is completely different from what I am used to in Brazil. Uh, the meet happens very fast. Uh, you swim a lot of events in a short period of time. Uh, in the first meet, uh, in the first match, I swam my best 203. In the second match, I improved my 403. In the third match, I improved my uh, 4 by 103 split. So it's great to have a chance to compete a lot of times uh, during those weeks. Uh, we have the opportunity to find points to improve and put into practice right afterwards. Uh, and I think my favorite part is the, the team energy that really gets you going on. Um, in my first meet, for example, I went to the team box to watch the first two events. And man, my heart rates got super high mm -hmm. just from watching. And I think I, I uh, carry, carry that energy uh, into my race. Uh, and it is different to do it uh, for the team. And it is a, a good feeling. Awesome, man. Well, listen, for somebody that was afraid of speaking English publicly, you just did a fantastic job. So congratulations. Uh, <laughs> That's the first you. time I heard him. <laughs> That's he it. doesn't speak. <laughs> uh, he doesn't talk. Well, now you got to push him, man. Push him to speak more yeah, English. No, I can. He can. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Yeah, perfect English. Uh, Santi, the first meet, you were uh, kind of in team support. I know uh, the rules of the, of the meets, uh, I, I believe you can have, what, 16 athletes on the roster, but only 14 are allowed to compete. So you were one of the two people that had to sit on the bench and watch the first meet. Is that correct? Yes, that's true. Well, only 14 guys can be on the, on the team that is racing. And so how did, they, how did they break that news to you? And then what was your... Um, mindset going into that meet. I mean, how do you contribute to the meet when you're just sitting on the bench? Well, I knew coming in that I was probably going to be that uh, alternate guy. I was, I was told that then the first week of training, I, I show something to the coaches and they were like, that, that's let's just focus on next weekend. And this weekend, I want you to just plan for, for the next match, not this one. So I knew a couple of days earlier that I wasn't going to swim. And you know, like my mindset was like, I know all the guys and girls are, are, are going to bring everything to the pool. So I have to bring all my energy to the, to the box. And that's what I wanted to do. That's what I wanted to do is just to make them feel that they were, there was a big team, even though there's not, a, there's not a crowd in the pool. I wanted them to feel that uh, the, the box was uh, vibrant and there was a lot of energy. So I just, uh, I think I brought that energy that we have in dual meets in the u.s you know um so try to be supportive in that way awesome man that's a great attitude to have and i'm sure guys like fernando who swam the first meet in the, in the 200 freestyle and got a win uh he needed that energy he needed that support fernando how how was the support from uh santi for your first meet uh, i think it was it was amazing uh how i said uh i think the the energy we've we felt uh when we are in the box and uh, screaming for the, the teammates, mm -hmm. uh, I can carry on that for the races. Uh, on my 203, 
I think I already have a race strategy set uh, for long course, but I still had not found that for the short course. And I tried to be more aggressive in the, in the front half and really focus and the turns and underwaters and to build uh, my kick during the race. Uh, and I had a good competition that day with Hepsis and other fast guys and beating them really make the feeling more special. Uh, I really like it, that victory. And, but I still think um, I am far from what I think I can do. And I believe I can swim much better. Yeah, I, I agree. I thought that first uh, race strategy was fantastic. To me, it looked like you changed your race strategy the second and third meets. You didn't, you didn't go out with the same aggression and the same confidence um, and the same race mentality, and, and you didn't get the same result. The, the first meet, you went out really strong and ended up winning the race, and the next two meets, you changed your strategy a little bit and didn't end up um, winning the races. So do you feel like you might want to go back to the first strategy again? Yes, I think uh, in, the, in the third match, uh, I tried to choose the same strategy, uh, the first one, but uh, I think I, I felt uh, some tired from the, the others' meets, the races, and I think the, the next week we can rest uh, along more and uh the the next match i think i will be be better than the the others ones nice nice asante you uh you did get a, a swim in the uh in the previous match that you one that you just had how did it feel to finally be part of the team and contributing and um and getting a swim it was awesome because our team was doing great the first and second match they, they were killing it they were swimming so fast and you know like I felt that I wasn't part yet of what they were doing because I was in the box I mean of course it was a, a team effort and everything counts I personally I, I I didn't feel I was contributing so last match I had the opportunity I saw the relays uh it was of course um you know that first race you know, breaking the ice it's always a different sensation but I was excited because I've been working on some mental things, mental coaching. And so I was also excited to bring that and put it together and see how that worked out for me. And I think it was great. It was great. I had a lot of fun. Most importantly for me, it was like about enjoying. And, you know, relays are always fun. And I think I put together two good swims uh, for my, my first um, appearance. So I was pretty happy. Well, listen, I'm talking to two guys from South America right now. This is a, a dream come true, really, for, for young kids like you. And I'm sure there's many swimmers back home who are looking at you as, um, as, a, as a role model now. Uh, do you feel like that, Fernando? Do you feel like a role model to young children back in Brazil? Uh, I don't know, but uh, in Brazil, we have uh, uh, a strong contact with the kids. Mm -hmm. uh, at Minas, we have uh, a lot of trainings uh, with the, the the base of the club. So mm -hmm. I think the kids uh, bring us uh, our energy, and uh, it's 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 good to to uh, be close uh, these kids, these these dreams to to help to build these dreams with with them. Nice. I love it, man. Now, uh, Santi, are you learning anything from your competitors that maybe you can take into the Olympic season next year? I'm learning a lot. I'm learning a lot of things. Uh, having the opportunity, as we say, to be in the box and not racing, you'll know, that also gives me the opportunity to watch, to observe. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, we not, I'm, I don't have that opportunity at any meet because when I go to the Olympics, I go to Pan American Games or even like American team, uh, meets you go you do the, you, you do your thing when you go racing you you're in your own zone and you don't pay attention to what's going on around so right now you know being able to to be in the outside maybe part of the competition also gives me this opportunity to watch and learn from other part from other area 
What about an example? Like, what are you learning from a guy like Tom Shields, who was the MVP, I believe, in the, the second match and uh, one of the fastest butterflies in the world, but he's also uh, a competitor, but he, he's a teammate now. So what are you learning from a guy like Tom? I really, I'm very like, uh, I like how he approaches every race, how um, calm he is before racing. You can see him. He's really in his own lane he's not paying attention to what's going on on the on the side and he he finished the first race get up and go warm down he knows he another race is coming and you don't see him like you know tired or complaining or you know like anything about that it's just about what the team needs you know and thinking about the next race and the next race and you know and that's something very important right now because on this league we need to learn how to race more and it will come at this point it's about racing and racing and racing so about him, I'm taking how he approaches every race and it doesn't really look how that he should swim at 200 fly uh, 20 minutes ago. Well, good stuff, guys. Well, listen, uh, thanks for the time today. I know you guys are just finishing up dinner and uh, getting ready for bed here. Uh, when is the next competition, Fernando? Uh, it starts uh, Monday. Monday, okay. Yeah. All right. Well, listen, uh, get some good training in. Get some rest and good luck at the next competition, okay? I'm looking forward to watching you guys compete in the finals, okay? Thank you, Brad. Really appreciate it for your time. Good luck to you. All right. Take care. Thank you, Brad.